go, ladies and gentlemen. What is up? I know I couldn't leave y'all 2020 without giving you some concrete stuff. Listen, we got a legend in the making here. None on than my man, Mr. Chuck Brown. I finally got a hold of this man. After waiting an entire year to get this interview, I had one of my associates finally get in contact with this man. And we finally got to set it up. This, this man is amazing. He's an absolutely extravagant, extreme, phenomenal writer. I absolutely love me some Chuck Brown. Y'all might know him from Bitter Roots, but Chuck Brown's resume speaks for itself. He's wrote for Black Panther. Um, he, he's wrote, he also, what, what's the other, um, the other comic that, that you have with the uh, image? It's, like, it's called, uh, On the Stump. On the Stump, yeah. On the stump. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. We're we gonna get into, we're gonna get into all that, yeah. um, later, but listen, Chuck, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right, man. Just um tired. Honestly, just trying to, you know, keep putting stuff out, man, and stay busy, you know, during these uh crazy times, you know. Mm -hmm. I understand. So so man, tell us all, tell us tell us a little about yourself. Where you from, man? Um from a small town, man, called uh Lada, South Carolina. Um came to Columbia, South Carolina to go to college, HBCU. And that's kind of where I met, you know, like minded people like myself that we're into like in the comics, you know, and uh, I did a lot of self-publishing and I grew up in a small town and kind of moved to Columbia and kind of settled here and raised a family. South Kakalak. South Kakalak here. Hey, hey, hey. All right now. So um, what inspired you to want to do comics? Like, uh, talk to me about that. I don't even know if it was, I don't even call it inspiration, man. Just something that, um, I used to do before I knew there was really a name for, you know, writers or, or, you know, if, if there was a career such as this, you know, I just, um, create characters, give them names, um, you know, grab a comic book at the local, uh, uh, you know, pharmacy. That's, we had the little spinner racks back in the day, um, at the pharmacies and, uh, watched a lot of Saturday morning cartoons, man. I just fell in love with it. And when, um, you know, when, Things got kind of dark or, or heavy in my in my young life, you know. I picked up a comic book, or I created my own comic book characters, and I just it just kind of eased me, you know, just something I enjoyed and something I did naturally, you know. And just later on in life, I just really started pursuing it, you know, as an actual career to actually kind of actually get something out there, you know, just baby steps, you know. First, I just did it because I loved it, then I just wanted to get something published, and then I just wanted to, you know, get more stuff out there, and it's all about that hustle, man. Just keep going. I hear you, man. I hear you. Um, who are some uh, comic book uh, writers that you looked up to, like coming up uh, as like the industry, or if, even when you got into the industry yourself? Who were some people that you looked up to? Honestly, it was honestly, believe it or not, it was um, uh, um, David Walker really inspired inspired me a lot, because um, I just noticed he talked openly about um, his depression and and you know and things he dealt with in his life. And at the time, it was something I just didn't talk about at all with anybody, you know. It was just something I kind of kept as, like, my little secret, you know, as what was going on in my life. But him speaking out about that and saying what's going on in the world and also saying he's a successful comic book writer and a black man, you know, kind of really opened my eyes. Like, you know, I don't have to, you don't have to hide, you know, that I'm depressed. I don't have to hide that, you know, I have suicidal thoughts. It's real, you know. It's, it's real. A lot of us are dealing with that. So... Just um, seeing him working on Cyborg and the things he did with Sanford and Power Man and Nine Fist, that was that was a huge inspiration to me. Just to um, be honest with myself about what's going on in my life and just um, you know, and still keep pursuing my career and not giving up. So. I hear you on that, man. Hey, listen, brother. Listen, you gotta you gotta always remember to keep yourself inspired and remember who you're doing it for. doing it for the fans. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like because uh, even when I find myself like beat myself up about not being where I feel like I should be. I always have to remember, even though I only have like maybe a thousand views or a thousand fans, those thousand fans, it's like 800 people that really like support my craft and appreciate that. And you have to always remember that. You know, like, um, like, you have to always remember that, like, uh, no matter where you are, like, people are preach, preach. And, uh, um, so yeah, man, like, uh, just, just get right back into it. Dude, you absolutely stud. You're a phenomenal writer. I don't understand like to be depressed about 
because a lot of people appreciate your work. I appreciate your work. Listen, I waited a whole damn year to get this interview. You know, <laughs> I'm excited. I got good. Like, you made my year, man. Like, getting to talk to so many different comic book illustrators. So let's let's talk a little bit about um, Bitter Roots. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, uh, I know you said David Walker um, was an inspiration to you, and you actually ended up working with him. Mm-hmm. Roots. So, like, uh, can, can you tell us uh, how, how that came to be? Um, you know, um, Bitter Roots was just, like, you know, one of many stories, like, in my archives of just trying to develop and put it out there. And um, I mentioned the Sanford Green um, one day, we were just hanging out, just asked what I was working on. And I gave him, you know, the Bitter Root Elevator pitch and his eyes lit up, you know. So, um, you know, I started sending him the script I was working on and I sent him the character designs and he did these amazing character designs. He's really excited about it. And we were gonna, you know, eventually self-publish it with, you know, Vertigo or somebody back in the day. Um, but then he started doing the Power Man and Iron Fist stuff and him and David blew up and he got busy with that and him and David talked a lot about Harlem Renaissance stuff as well too and he knew I admired David so we all kind of just kind of came together and just put all our ideas together and put the book out together so that's kind of how it all came to be you know it's hey, a- shout out to Mr. Sanford and uh, also shout out to Mr. Walker uh, I'm, I'm trying to get into it but listen uh, okay so wow I, I did not know that um I may, I may have missed it somewhere in the notes, but I didn't know that, that you were the original creator for, for uh, Bitter Roots. I thought that all you collectively. Uh, so, okay, so tell us about the Sanjiyas, man, because I got volume one and two. I don't know where everybody else is with the volumes. Right. I love me some Bitter Roots. Well, but so to tell us a little about the Sanjiyas. I, I like that he's inspired from a family you knew. Is it your family or like is this the name you came up with? Like, talk to they're, them about they're, they're the, the family. What they do is, you know, for people that don't know, they're basically um, um, a long line of family um, monster hunters, right? But um, there are other monster hunters in this in this world, um, in our imagination. Right. But our, our family, the Sangaris, they're, they're the only ones that actually cure these monsters of hate, right? So um, the idea of the Sangaris, um, well, let me go back up a little bit. So our, our main villain is... Around a little bit. Our main villain is... Right, and originally, yes. Doctor Sylvester was um, basically just a regular monster, but and he basically living in, in 1924, he was sick of all the racial injustice going around him. So basically, he wanted to use his power to basically have our people, you know, basically rise up and basically destroy our oppressors. You know, you know, not turn their cheek in a sense. And I guess the idea of the Sangaris is, I guess the Sangaris for me is they are where I would like to be. I would like to be that person that could turn the other cheek and, and want to change you and want to do, you know, want to do something positive. And Dr. Sylvester is more, you know, how I am now. It's like, you know, F this person, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't care. You Malcolm know, X. Right. Uh, Malcolm X. Yeah. Punch in the X. X. Punch a Nazi, basically. Yeah. So that's kind of what that, they, they symbolize that part of me that I want to achieve or what mankind should strive for that's where they are you know um that's why the characters okay. just okay. inspirations from different characters or listen, and and listen i love the doctor because um like one of my best friends taught me normally i, I don't like villains unless they like funny like dr evil or somebody like or um <laughs> count all of well, you know you know these villains that like make you laugh but um he taught me the significance of why a villain is important and also, um, you have to learn how to sympathize with the villain, which is normally we don't do. We're conditioned to like, no, the villain won't like that person. No, and just looking at his story and you know what he's insensitive about, or, or what he's sensitive about, and what he's not sensitive about, I can kind of sort of relate. I understand right. like his pain, his suffering, right. and it's 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 plausible. You know, it's prudent. Um, you know why he uh, has his motives. It's just that it's other people that may disagree with you. I understand that you're suffering. I understand that you know you come from a lot of hurt. But at the same time, you can't put that energy on everybody else. And right. So um, that's that's why I kind of like um, I feel him. And he was kind of doing good until he met a drove. And um, for those of you who don't know, a drove is a, a African entity, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Mm-hmm. In yeah, in Indago, yeah. Mm-hmm. Indago. Okay. There's two of them, 
right? It's it's a dro and it's indago. A dro is a good one, the light one, and uh, indago is a bad one, right? Well, the well, the, the indago, well, the indago basically are mostly African Americans that are victims of hate, you know, and the gino are more people that inflict hate or cause hate, you know, in a sense. So both both souls are corrupted, but it's all about how they were corrupted, you know. And and like you said, that every villain, you know, every good villain is a hero of, of their own story. You know, they're not in their eyes a bad guy doing evil. They're trying to do right by the world in their in their mind. It's just their means for trying to do this right in the world. And and I totally agree. I love I, I mean I love I love villains to death. I love looking at what made them who they are, you know. Um Doctor Doom He's evil. He looks evil. He has the cool green cape, but in his twisted mind, he wants to save the world. You know, he wants to save people. That's what he wants. By, but he wants. He thinks he can save the world by being a dictator and 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 ruling with an iron hand. And you know, so no, you're yeah. wrong. no. <laughs> his sole mission is Sue. Stop it. Stop it. His sole mission is Sue Banner. Oh, Sue. You know it. You know. I mean, he it. likes Sue. Yeah, but you know that's just a bonus. You know, he's still a villain. You know, Dude, a, I'm not saying he's a world. I'm not saying a villain. Not that he's not a villain, but in his mind, you know, he wants to save the world. Maybe he deserves to by his side in his mind, you know? No, you can have whatever woman you can have whatever woman in the world you want, but you're gonna take a married woman that has children. Like, are you kidding me? Are you, listen, you you a Doom fan for real. You 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 are a Doom. Listen, I gotta give it to you. Listen, I like I Doom. Doom. I like Doom, I like Doom man. The man with the whole country. You think you let one woman keep him away? You don't care. You don't care. I'm not saying he's a person, but you know. That man turned Johnny Storm into the sun, and he made the fiend into a giant wall. Listen, if that's not the level of petty, you you could have put them. You could have put all of them into like because he he shaped the universe how he wanted. You could have literally turned secret, the secret world, right? Secret world, right? The secret world, yeah, secret world. Yeah, secret world. Right, uh, right. I, I think it's called Battle World or something like that. Where where him and Doctor um, Strange um, use um, 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 Atom Man, Medium Man. What's that man name? I, I forget his name. I can't believe I forgot his name at the moment. But uh, basically. Um, oh, okay. No, it's not Marvel Man. It's, I think it's Adam Man or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm a, like comic, comic book fans would be ashamed of me. Comic, but yes, they they basically got him to eat the entire universe, and uh, and they created another universe, and that's how they put everything together. But right. listen, so just, just oh my God, just stand on track. Um, hey, real quick, we about to get disconnected. I'm gonna hang up and I'm gonna call you right back. Okay. Okay. We're gonna hang up and call you right back. So just uh, we're gonna pick it right back up from uh, we're talking about the San Diego's and we talked about um, I'm, I'm gonna edit all this anyway. But I'm, I'm, uh, we talked about the San Diego's. We talked about the doctor. Uh, I wanted to get a little a little more detail into the storyline with the family. So uh, that's we're gonna pick it up right now. Okay, I'm gonna call you right back. Okay.